Hey guys, Banana Lock here, and welcome back to another Watch of Realms video. Today we have a new event that opened up, uh, which is similar concept to, I think, the Endless Tower in Red Shadow Legends, and uh, this game mode is pretty interesting for the fact that you can adjust your difficulties uh, with these different modifiers, and also the fact that there's this special mechanic where you don't really need good gear or artifacts to, you know, uh, in this mode, all your heroes are basically max level and promotion grade, but uh, they don't need any gears or artifacts to make them work well. Pantheon bonuses don't work as well. So we're gonna showcase the first three runs with I have, which I've done already. Uh, of course, the subsequent runs, uh, there will be other videos following up on it, but uh, it's gonna take pretty long, so I just thought to showcase the first three uh, for now. So we're going to select all the difficulty intensifiers, which means that you can only use four heroes and the cost that you get, uh, cost regeneration refers to this over here, uh, is also reduced and damage taken is also reduced. Basically making the game a lot tougher, but pretty interesting. Uh, so Anora works really well here for some reason because uh, Without any promotions and stuff, her ultimate apparently uh, requires the least amount of, you know, uh, rich regeneration. Shall we? And we have Boris down next. Uh, it's pretty much AFK for here. We just place down heroes, but we don't really have to uh, put down the ultimates. Except for the last part here, where the purple guys come in. Go. Dahlia down next. And then we're going to have Karmet down next. No defenders, because we don't need that. We just need some slow and burst. Karmet works really well because of that passive, where whenever he does a first hit on enemies, he actually gets that, you know, uh, extra boost of damage. So that works out really well for him here. The next wave, this is when we're going to pop Boris's ultimate, uh, just to make sure that it's back up before the last wave comes in. Should be enough burst damage here. There we go. Okay, now we just wait for the next wave to come in and that's probably when we use Comet's ultimate. Because Comet is going to die in a short while when the Mages, this one's actually come up here. So let's do this and see if we manage to actually burst. Or do we need like a uh, more damage there? Okay. Past that. Yes. The nose of our hair. The pop Anora's out because we need it. I'm going to need Boris's out here as well. There we go. Nora lies there, but uh, it's pretty much game over here. And I'm going to pause here because I don't want to waste my challenges. There's only 15 a day. And yeah, this is how you clear stage 1. And I think the MVP here is probably Boris and Dahlia, if I had to guess. Also damage coming up from them. Oh, Nora actually doing great work here. So that's interesting. Uh, Ahmed not so much because he doesn't really get to hit uh, most of the units. It's just that first uh, boost that comes in that's helpful. So that's stage one, done and dusted. Maximum uh, difficulty. And then we go on to stage two. This is going to be marksman focused. And the units I've chosen are here. So let's get on with it. Okay. First guy we're gonna put down is actually Silas right here. I strike true. I'm gonna do Hatsut next. And once this wave is cleared, we can actually go ahead to despawn Hatsu. Because we need her to be invisible for a short while later on. So this 
And let's bring Nyx in. In Nyx to get that extended range and lock boost, because she's gonna do a lot of work here. Ayla should be able to solo this uh, without us having to do any extra work. I think we need to put down Hatsut. Alright. Hatsut's uh, passive does some defense reduction, so that really helps here as well. And after this wave is where the big waves will start to come in. That's when we have to start using our ultimates. Close, uh, let's see. I'll do next first. Uh, next out you are gonna do is gonna be hot suit. Once the boss starts channeling the big ass tire in there. Let's wait for a bit here. Okay, pretty much done here. I'm gonna quit here because Nyx is definitely gonna get another hit. So this stage is a lot more straightforward. You just need the right marksman for it. I think you could actually pull off having Rezak here instead of Hatsut. Um, but I'm just not sure if you can do it without Silas because the burst for the big tyrants really helps a lot. But yeah, that's stage two. A lot more straightforward if you ask me. And damage-wise, Nyx obviously doing a good amount of work here. Hatsut not so much. Uh, I think the low cost just helps with the initial stage because uh, if we only play Silas, the first fish that walks out doesn't actually die to him because you need to place him at the back. Place him at the front, he takes aggro from the mobs that spawn from there. So yeah. Uh, next one is going to be... Somewhat Asterisis faction focused and maximum modifiers again and this is going to be our kit. Uh, I chose Aelin only because her heal, sorry, her cost is pretty low and she does quite a good amount of healing. Uh, I think Sadie could work as well but I found that my units got to quite low of a HP at the end. Uh, Fursi works well here as well because of the AoE damage reduction. And let's go to the bookkeepers which do AoE damage, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it's the bookkeepers. The white uh, scholars are the one that train rich uh, the bottom here. So first hero we're going to put down is actually Silas and it's going to be just here. These mages are very weak to physical damage, that's why we have Silas up here first. And if we don't deal with them first, they're gonna take out a chunk of rage from uh, Boris. Shall we? So the mechanic here works such as uh, the Esoteris Distraus. Whenever you actually pop an ultimate on the Lightning Tiles, uh, the whole map gets slowed. For a brief moment, let's see here. Yep. Yeah, I may have placed my Boris wrongly. I placed him actually facing up in my final run, but let's see if this works. If not, then it's just a matter of restarting the run. Could have popped Silas's ultimate there actually before the mob spawn out. But yeah, normal damage wise, we're still doing fine. Reason why you want Boris facing up is that uh, him being able to hit these units does help a bit in dealing damage. But let's just see how this goes. This comes to us, we'll just restart the run. Uh, Nyx also does great work here. You're gonna see, see her killing these mobs in like 3 hit. So I think that's probably why we need Boris at the top there. Let's 
we start the run and the face borders to the Evil dry. Allow me to shed some light. Let the shadows can't hide you. Darkness as I do. But the agony lingers. Estimate a wronged vampire. Okay, finally got the run down. Uh, I think it all boiled down to really having. Boros's timing working out for us. Uh, you do need to make sure that you cast his ultimate uh, after he does that passive freeze. If you do it just after that passage, then it goes into that long cooldown, and you know uh, he actually doesn't benefit from his ultimate. You can see he's doing most amount of the damage there uh, because those guys are incredibly tanky, and we did have to waste one challenge there, but I think it was fine. Uh, still got lots of power to go, anyways. Um, and finally, for a video for once, we don't actually have to showcase gear. So what I did, what I was referring to for Boris is that, you see, he has this uh, passive where, you know, uh, during his ultimate skill trigger interval is reduced by an extra 9 seconds. So this doesn't get reduced uh, if he cuts his ultimate after he does that freeze. So you need to make sure that, you know, you actually get down the... Uh, ultimate before he does this passive so that's probably what caused the variances in the run and why i didn't manage to get it off first try and yeah that's gonna be it for the video if you have any questions feel free to leave it down in the comment section below and i'll see you in the next video Goodbye.